Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl. Happy back to school season. I think most of us are either in our first or second week into school already, but I just want to make a very quick vid on the little budget desk setup behind me. I think a lot of students or people on a budget in general will find it very useful. Before we start though, there is some unfortunate news around some spam in the comments. I think someone's trying to impersonate me, trying to claim that you've won a giveaway and contacting you through WhatsApp and is asking you actually to pay money for shipping. So please, if you do see that comment, it is not me, they're kind of just spamming the channel, so please report that. And if I do try to reach out to you, I will only send you a direct DM either on Instagram or Twitter, both of those verified accounts. So unless you get a message from me directly, and I'll never ask you to pay anything. If you want something, I will take care of the shipping no matter what the cost or where you end up living. So please, if you've already been scammed, try to reach out to PayPal to kind of sort that dispute. It's so unfortunate that we have these things and uh, yeah, I'll have to try to figure out a better way for my giveaways. But anyways, back to the good stuff behind me budget desk setup. So a lot of this is based off of Ikea because that's usually the cheapest stuff for furniture. And a lot of it is kind of the cheapest in category. I tried really tough. There are some areas where I didn't do too well. We'll start off with the actual desk itself. This one needs no introduction. It's been on the channel before. It's probably been on every YouTube video. It is the classic YouTuber desk hack. It's a kitchen countertop on top of two Ikea Alex dryers. And in case this is the first time you're seeing it, it's actually a pretty cool hack. This tabletop is actually a kitchen countertop. That's what they sell it as in Ikea. It's called the Little Trask. It is $49 depending on where you live and you can actually select different finish options. So I have the cheapest one in white. You can get ones that look like the marble replicas, even wood replicas. Obviously they aren't the exact real material because you have to keep that cost down. So they are made out of laminate, but for a student desk or for a desk in general, I think they're honestly awesome. They hold really well. They don't really get damaged too much. They're really easy to clean. And you actually have a couple options of how to set it up leg wise. So you can choose to get the cheapest Ikea desk legs. I think these are around 4.99, five bucks a pop or you can go the more traditional route and actually follow the desk hack fully and mount them on top of the two Ikea Alex drawers. I do find if you get the longest desk option, there is a tad bit of sag in the middle. So I would recommend if you do that, make sure you just get one of these legs and just kind of drill it in the middle of the desk to ensure over time you don't get that unnecessary bending in your desk. There's nothing really else in that price point that you'll find. I know the drawers are slightly more expensive, over $100, but uh, if you actually look at any other furniture online, I'm sure you'll realize how ridiculously expensive furniture is. As kind of a testament, I've had this setup as long as I've been making YouTube videos now for more than 10 years, so it has stood the test of time. I've actually labeled some of the cabinets to kind of keep a bit more organized, and you can see how yellowish the tags are getting. So that's how long I've had them. They've been great, and I recommend this setup to everyone that's looking for something a bit on the budget side, and I think for a student, this is the perfect place to start. Next off, we're gonna go on over to the chair. This is something that I wish I invested in. Maybe if you're, you know, 19, 20, you're not thinking about your chair, you're not thinking about your back. If you do sit in your desk for five to six hours a day, if you're crunching most of your schoolwork, if you're working on your essays, if you're playing video games like a lot of us did in school, get a decent chair. <laughs> This one is from Autonomous, so it's slightly more than what you'll see on the Ikea side, but I do think if you've got that extra bit of money, it's worth it to spend, especially if you are sitting in it for hours and hours a day. On to the computer choice, and this is kind of the area where I really cheated on, but I think it's the one spot where you should spend that extra amount of money. There are three $400 laptops that you kind of see on sale. I think if you're going to university, you just want something that can last you your entire four years. There's no point spending three, 400 bucks in your first year and by year two or three, you have to spend another four or $500 to buy another one. The base MacBook Air or MacBook Pro with the M1 chip is my recommended spec. The battery life, being a student, that's so important. You get around 15 hours of use, so even if you aren't charging it when you're back in your dorm room or wherever you are in class, you can use it on the go all the time. The Dell XPS line is really decent for Windows, but I am really kind of tuned to the Apple space, and I know you won't say that this is a budget option, but like I said, this is the one area that I think you should kind of cheat on 
go that extra bit if you can kind of afford it. And a little kind of hack that a lot of people don't know about, if you go to the Apple refurbished site, you can kind of get a deal on any Mac product. They're literally brand new products that people have just bought and returned them because they've either tested them, they want something else, they've created unboxing videos, they are essentially brand new and Apple of course tests them all, repackages them and they can't sell them like new so they knock off 20% and they still come with the exact same 30 day warranty. So even if you don't like it, you still have that option to return it. So I think the refurbished site kind of goes under the radar and to save 20% on an Apple thing, which they usually never go on sale. I think that's an awesome little budget hack. The only accessory that I think you'll need with your laptop when you go back to your actual desk is of course a mouse. You don't wanna live just using the trackpad. So I just picked up this cheap Samsung one. It was the cheapest on Amazon, I think 19 bucks. And because the keyboard is really decent over on the MacBook, I think you can get by without buying an external Bluetooth one. So that's always an option to save some money. You might need to buy a dongle. Once again, the cheapest on Amazon usually does the trick. USB-C dongles are kind of synonymous now as we only have the two USB-C ports. For another 20 bucks, you get access to classic USB-A ports, HDMI, depending on what external monitor you have. Going on to the monitor now, which I know is kind of optional, but I think it's nice to have if you are back in your dorm room or going back home, just to have something that your laptop can plug into, especially if you are sitting down for hours and hours kind of typing out those long essays, just having something where you aren't craned over your neck staring at your laptop over time and kind of just having a bigger display. So this one is from LG. It is two years old now, but they do have the updated model. And that new model name is the 24KM600. Not much has changed other than the stand just going from silver, the older version, which I have to now black, which I think looks a bit sleeker. It's crazy how much monitors have come down in price, obviously, for the budget category, you don't get 120 Hertz. You don't get a USB-C port, which of course is why that dongle becomes so necessary and you don't get some of the best picture quality, but for 200 bucks, I think it's a great monitor, just something nice to have for a larger display. I know a lot of us might be back in the classroom, but we are still spending a ton of time on Zoom calls, on Google Hangouts, on Teams for Microsoft, whether that's for group meetings or maybe even some classes in general. I know you can get by using your laptop's little front-facing camera. I know that they're half decent, especially on the MacBook. I will say though, if you have a hundred extra dollars, grab an external microphone for the time that you spend on those calls. Just sounding better than a potato or whatever you have built in is always nice. This is the Wave 3 from Elgato. It's one of their budget-friendly ones. It comes with a built-in pop filter for around a hundred bucks. I don't think you can find something this good for this kind of money. It's a simple plug and play through that little dongle. And if you do any creative stuff, if you're streaming, if you're chatting with friends over any video or just chat sort of base, just having a microphone is cool. Speaker wise, I think most students will just rock the audio on their given laptop, which is totally fine. But if you wanna be a bit more versatile, if you wanna have a bit more sound quality, a simple little hack is just connecting your laptop via Bluetooth to a Bluetooth speaker. I know it's technically not a dedicated desktop speaker, but it gives you extra sound quality. It definitely sounds way better if you're watching Netflix or a movie at your desk. And the best part of the Bluetooth speaker, you can always disconnect that and carry it around to another area. You can listen to your music off of your smartphone. You can bring it to another dorm room if you're having a bit of a dorm party. I just got this one from LG because they just sent it over. Maybe not the cheapest or the most budget friendly. You can probably find one on Amazon once again for 20, 30 bucks. I'll leave my favorites budget options from say Anchor down below. I think this is slightly more around 50 to 60. It sounds better, but if you really wanna save that extra coin, I will leave the cheapest option for you in the description. Speaking of sound options, most students do in the end have a pair of noise canceling earbuds just to make sure you drown out the sound around you so you can zone into whatever you're focusing on. Budget wise, I've kind of listed my two favorite options. These are the Huawei FreeBuds 4i. 99 bucks, they don't knock off active noise canceling, which most budget headphones do, just like the ones from Google, the Pixel Bud Series A. You might see these and think that they're good, which they are, they sound great, but unfortunately, most budget earbuds do knock off active noise canceling, which I do think is a shame, which I think is a key selling point, especially if you are in school. I know sometimes people look at Huawei and kind of back away because of the name. We all know what happened last year, but um, I would definitely take these over the Pixel Buds. 
and these are still cheaper. Smartphone options, I did keep true to the budget game. I didn't include an iPhone on this list. My choices are the TCL Pro 20S for around four to 500 bucks, depending on where you snag it. I think it's a solid option. And if you wanna keep things super budget under that $250 mark, there's really nothing that beats the Poco M3. This is kind of as budget as it gets. I know that the screen isn't the greatest. It's LCD based and doesn't get as bright or vibrant as pretty much any other smartphone. But if you are looking for budget, it is still 5G. It's still decently quick for that price. You really can't beat this value. And I would argue I would pay less for a smartphone more on say the laptop. I know that might seem counterintuitive, but if you are here, for school, if you wanna be a bit more productive, if you still wanna get by, your laptop will actually save you school-wise, whereas maybe your smartphone will save you socially-wise. But um, yeah, you'll have to make that option if you wanna spend more on a phone, less on the laptop, or vice versa. I'd lean to that. I know that most of you would probably lean towards getting a better phone. For the rest of the budget stuff, this is really coming down to accessories. These are around that $20 to $25 mark. Honestly, this is where Amazon Basics are just getting the cheapest stuff on Amazon really shines. They're all essentially the same for accessories. This is where items like chargers, external batteries, you don't need name brand products for those. You don't need a $150 OnePlus supercharger to charge your smartphone get a $20 one off of Amazon. So yeah, I will leave all my favorite accessories linked below. You'll probably see this little thing off to the side. I had to throw in some gaming. I know the Nintendo Switch isn't necessarily budget. Most people, I would say for budget wise, if you really want a game on your smartphone, but if there was one console I could recommend, it is a handheld one. So the Nintendo Switch is kind of perfect because you can play it on the go. You can store it in your backpack, play in class if you can in the back. And the last thing for students, if you wanna make your room a bit more unique, I just have a Porsche poster off to the side. This one is from Canvogue. I know, once again, pricier end. If you really wanna keep it budget, just getting a standard poster out of paper. You know, it does the exact same trick. And if you are in school, just kind of rocking it with some of the paraphernalia or gear from your university. So back in the day, I used to go to U of T. This is my U of T scarf that I still sometimes rock from time to time. So if you are back to the classroom, back to school, wishing you all best of luck. Hope you guys enjoyed this vid. I hope you'll kind of forgive me for some of the budget options that aren't necessarily budget. I'm looking at that laptop, but I don't think you will regret it. If you think I've forgotten any other budget essential options, let me know down below in the comments and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.